In today's video, we're going to learn how to create this exploded atonometric project in Photoshop. <laughs> Hi everyone, so first you want to open your Revit project and you want to go to your 3D view and uh, once you put it in line mode, you want to use the displacement tool to move your different elements of the house. If you don't know what the displacement tool is, this is the displacement tool. So you select any element, your roof, your, you know, your walls and once you click the displacement tool, it will give you an option to move any object up, down or sideways. So what you want to do is just move each element, you know, just like the roof, the first floor, the second floor, or, uh, you know, the whole terrain. And so that it looks like an exploded at cinematic view, right? Don't worry because this tool is really not going to move everything. It's just going to move it for the purpose of this view. But if you go to any other view, you will see that mm, everything is just as it is. So when you move this, you want to be very organized. You don't want to move everything, you know, in different levels. So you want to be, you know, you want, you want it to be organized, right? So if you're doing a structure, you want to do, you want to know that every structure element is organized in its correct order. Once you do this, you want to export uh, your atonometric view as a PDF file, right? So you want to export it in a big size and we are going to open it in Photoshop where we are going to put the rest of the textures and the iconography in, right? So let's open Photoshop and we want to drag that atonometric view in and we want to create a new layer below and just create a, a white layer, fill it with white, right? Also, we want to change the canvas of the tool as usual. So you can use the C tool on your keyboard to uh, amplify your canvas. And we're with the polygonal lasso tool, we're going to select each level of our, of our astronometric level and we're going to press Control Shift J. That is going to separate each, uh, you know, like each little diagram into a different layer, right? So we can manipulate them uh, independently and we don't have all of these in one layer. Once you do this, you're going, I'm, I'm just going to create a new uh, copy of each diagram. So we can put it on the side, like in smaller compact, compact version and one big zoomed in of the, of the first floor. So this is more or less going to be like a little presentation board that I'm going to do very quick. Just take into account that I usually don't do presentation boards in InDesign. In Photoshop, I usually do them in InDesign. But for the purpose of this, uh, this little image, I'm just going to do them in Photoshop. So you want to create a new layer, add a blue, black, a blue background, and you, we want to create a uh, we want to erase all the whites that are in the original layers, right? If you put the white below all the layers, you're going to see that there are some white fillings be in between. So once you erase all the whites, you want to go to each layer and press Control I. That is going to invert the selection and make the black lines white, right? So that is how we want it to look, you know, in, in our first part, right? So it has, it has like that bl blueprint style. Now we are going to uh, add a color code for each element, right? So for example, uh, the, the walls are going to be white, the floors are going to be dark blue, the interior, wall, interior walls are going to be light blue, etc, etc, right? So I'm going to select, uh, for example, all the walls with the polygonal lasso tool, and within a new layer, I'm going to color them white. And it's very important that you, uh, like for this specific image, you have a monochromatic style, style, right? So you don't use like any reds, any different colors from the blues or the whites, because it's going to look a little bit, you know, different from the style that we want. So you just want to uh, use the light blue, dark blue, white, maybe black, but just keep it very monochromatic. Now, again, within a new layer with uh, the paint bucket tool, just the interior walls, we are going to paint them dark blue, right? Then uh, I'm going to select a light blue and, and paint all the floors in a very light bluish that doesn't have, you know, that doesn't get your attention that much, that is sort of discreet.
Now, as you guys can see, it also helps a lot to have a very detailed model. So if this is a very, if, if you have a very uh, schematic model of, of your house, maybe it's not going to look as interesting. Since I'm using the, the Revit sample project, it has all the furniture, all the interior details. So that helps a lot to export a big, a big image. And if you want to print it out very big, you can always like get very close up and see a lot of detail in each part, which also helps a lot. And as you guys can see, the magic in this is pretty much the, you know, the color code that you have for everything, right? I think I tried, like before uh, actually recording this video, I tried out a different color codes for, for each element. And this one was the one that seemed to work out the most, right? Because it, used, it seemed to make uh, the important elements, just such as the wall, stand out much more. And it, it turned out, um, you know, an advantage for this house specifically because it's designed in such a, such a, you know, in such a cool way that we want to make the, you know, the important things stand out. So if you have, uh, if if the important things are in in your walls, into in your interior walls, maybe in your windows, or maybe in the floor, you want to make that specific element white. Now that we're done with this, we're going to I'm going to copy the the first layer, the ground layer white. And I'm going to, you know, make it a lot bigger, a lot bigger. And I'm just going to put it by the side. I'm going. I'm also going to make a very compact version of all the house. You know that, so it's not it's not exploded, but it's just everything grouped together. I can do this also in Revit and export it again. But since I already have it color coded right here, I'm just going to you know just place it all above you know each layer above the other. And with that, we are going to have our, uh, you know, our base image. Now we need to add the textures and the feel that are just going to make it look a little bit grungy, a little bit, uh, you know, old fashioned. So I'm just going to look for a, a grid texture. You can do this uh, with any brushes. I have a specific grid texture brush that I downloaded from BrushEasy.com, or you can, uh, you know, do this with a grid image from Google. And I'm going to mask out this image and start painting it, in, painting it in with a very uh, grungy brush, right? So we don't have a perfect grid, but we have a more or less imperfect grid that you know looks kind of old. And it's going to give it that, that interesting look. Now we're going to look for a grunge texture. We're going to desaturate it by pressing Control Shift U, and we're going to set it to multiply mode, right? So that is going to just, you know, make everything below a little bit grungier, a little have a little a little bit much texture. So that's going to make it look much more interesting with a lot more depth. Now, using the pen tool and selecting uh, these dash lines, I'm just going to create uh, some pro you know, some projection lines uh, so we can tie all the exploded telemetric uh, to together, right? So once we do this, we want to make sure that the lines aren't very thick, but they also aren't very thin, right? We just want to make them look like they're the perfect, the perfect thickness, and we also want to make them white, right? And once we do this, we can also do these uh, projection lines to the other, uh, to the compact uh, atonometric view and to the specific atonometric view. And as you guys can see with these very simple steps, you know, this image uh, has a lot of character. It looks super, super interesting. And um, it's it's those those simple basic small tools that that sometimes we just don't don't use that much that make these images look a lot more interesting. Now, finally, as you guys always know, we have to add some text to add some uh, information to each drawing. So we're going to with a you know an interesting typography. In, in this case, uh, I'm using a Futura uh, typography. I'm just going to add. A, uh, a text that specifies, you know, which, uh, 
which part of the attenometric view uh, corresponds to the roof, to the first floor, to the second floor, and to the terrain. I'm also going to add some brushes, some tree brushes, you know, the normal tree brushes that, that we use in our videos. And that is basically it. You know, this is this was a very fun project for me. I think I hope you guys liked it. Uh, comment down below what you thought about it. Uh, like and subscribe for more of these videos. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.